Okay, I think in order to respect everyone's time, we'll get started. And as people join, uh, they can just catch up. Good afternoon. Um, happy Wednesday, like I said before. Um, this is the uh, webinar to assist grantees with their annual performance report that's due for the School Climate Transformation Grant LEA program. My name is Nicole White. I am joined by Spencer Mullen and Jen Freeman from the PBIS TA Center. Um, and we're going to be helping you today. Next slide, please. So um, this is, everyone's going into their fourth year. Um, so you're pretty familiar with the reporting requirements. Um, there are some things that are a little different this year, um, but I hope that this webinar um, eases your anxiety and uncertainty you may have around the reporting this year is very, very similar. Um, it's just really a name change. But um, Spencer will be answering questions in the chat while I'm talking. And then when he takes over, I will answer questions in the chat. So please feel free to put your questions in the chat and we'll get to those. So this year in terms of reporting, um, school climate transformation grantees will need to submit an annual performance report, which you're familiar with. And then they will submit any additional information to this report or an addendum to this report later in the year. Your APR, the annual performance report that will be due June 15th, will be submitted via G5. And so if you are not the project director of record, um, please contact either myself or Spencer so that we can make sure that you are listed correctly in G5. Um, as you may know or may not know, only the project director or the authorized representative listed in G5 may submit the performance report in G5. So make sure that you are correctly listed as the project director. Next slide. So as I mentioned before, um, there's a slight change to the reporting this year. For me, it, it's simply a, a name change. Um, you will still submit an annual performance report. Um, there is no interim performance report due this year. So the IPR, which was the report that you submitted midway through your budget year, you will not submit that. You will be submitting an annual performance report. And that report is due June 15th, 2023. Um, as you know, your budget year um, ends September 30th. So by October 13th, you will, sub you will submit your updated data, your updated budget information, anything that you want to add to what you submitted by June 15th. So your annual performance report is due June 15th, <clears throat> where you will report up to a certain period. And then October 13th, you will submit all of your final data for this year. So that includes your Gipper data, that includes budget data. So you could kind of look at it like the IPR is now the APR and the APR is what you're submitting in October. It's really just a name change, okay? The There's a question in the chat. So the annual performance report will be due in G5. And any addendum information and follow-up information will be sent via email to your project officer. So it will either be Nicole or Spencer. Okay, next slide. And I, I'm reiterating this so that there's no uh, misunderstanding about when these things are due. The annual performance report, which will be submitted in G5, is due June 15th. The reporting period for this APR is from October 1st, 2022 through May 15th, 2023. So as you can see, when you're submitting the APR, you're not reporting on your full year. And that is why by October 13th, you'll submit your follow-up additional addendum final data for this budget period. All right, next slide. 
<clears throat> Again, the addendum information to the APR, your final budget information, your final numbers for your GIPRA is due October 13th, and that will be submitted via email to Spencer or myself. And there's a question in the chat. So yes, you're basically updating your GIPRA data, your Section A, and you're updating and giving us your final numbers for your budget information. Next slide. Um, as you may be aware, but there may be some on here who are not aware, um, we are using the same form <laughs> to submit these the annual performance report, and that's the Ed 524 form. And it has five sections. It has the cover sheet, um, which has your um, information on it. It has your executive summary, which is your narrative of your program's progress thus far. Section A, which includes um, your GIP, where you report on your GIPR data and any other project-specific measures that you set for your program. Section B, which um, focuses on the budget. And Section C, which is the additional information that the um, <clears throat> department request for your program. You can also add any additional information you want to add in section C. These forms um, can be found at the link below. Um, and I, may, I didn't say this in the beginning. I, we will send you this PowerPoint slide after this um, webinar. Um, you may not necessarily need the forms because since the APR is doing G5, the forms are built into G5. But if you just want to look at them, they're right there. Next slide. Um, again, this is what the cover sheet looks like. Next slide. Um, some things to note on this cover sheet. You have to complete A and B for um, number eight. And the reporting period for this report, as I mentioned before, is from October 1st, 2022 through May 15th, 2023. Um, we'll check the link, David, to see um, if there's an updated link. Sometimes we'll make sure you have the updated link. Okay, next slide. And so um, the second piece of this Ed 524, which is the uh, executive summary piece, is where you will provide a general summary or narrative around your um, school climate transformation grant LEA activities thus far from October 1st, 2022 through May 15th, 2023. Um, you'll let us know about your goals, your objectives. You'll let us know about any challenges you may have had, any successes you would like to share. And this is just kind of where you spotlight your program in narrative form. It's one or two pages. It doesn't have to be like a full book, but um, there's plenty of space to share your accomplishments here. Next slide. Uh, this is section A, which deals with <laughs> your where you will report your GIPR data and any project or project specific um, goals or objectives that you set for your project. And so now I will turn it over to Spencer and Jen, who will talk about section A and reporting on your data. Hey, everyone. Uh, Next slide, please. Thank you. Um, good afternoon and good morning to some of you. Um, so we're going to go over Section A uh, over the next for the next few slides. Um, so for Section A, you do have to uh, report data for both the uh, program and GEPR measures. So GEPR measures uh, are agreed upon; they are unchangeable. Uh, program measures were. Uh, set by grantees, and you still have to report on all those. Uh, yeah, make sure you are uh, entering the raw score and the percentage numbers in the actual performance data section. Next slide, please. Sorry. Hang on. Uh, you can create one, more than one page for section A if you need to uh, explain any insufficient data or if you have no data for it. And make sure that um, you're using your uh, section A 
for all the data collection procedures, explanations, and the response rates, and anything else. Next slide, please. If you haven't submitted complete GEPR data in the APR, you'll need to complete and you need to submit, submit your complete and final data for this budget on October 13th, 2023. Next slide. Uh, ensure all the data that you report addresses the measure. Um, any measures asking for a number or percentage of schools in a particular area, ensure your response to schools, uh, not the incidents, participants, or the students involved. Uh, any measures asking for improvement compare school outcomes for this current performance period to the previous performance period. So uh, anything that happened last year, it has to be compared uh, for this year. Next slide, please. Uh, when considering improvement from year to year, make sure, be mindful if you've already reached your maximum goal. For instance, if you had zero last year and zero this year, then you can report improvement. But if you had one this year and one incident last year, then there's no improvement and you have to um, report that as well. Um, Jen, do you wanna add anything for this section? Um, yeah, I'll just read, I'll just emphasize that this is the same routine that we have used for all of the other reports. Um, there is a guidance document called Completing the Ed 524 um, that's posted on pbs.org. I think I can try to share it in the chat as well that just sort of details exactly what these pages look like. If you haven't seen it before, feel free to use that as a guide or reach out if you have any questions. Um, but what Spencer's highlighting here are just a couple of the sort of common errors that we see and make it hard for us to, to um, summarize the data. So just pay attention to, to some of those pieces. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, these next few sections, I'm not going to read them all off to you. Um, these are just about the GEPR measures, which you should be aware of. Um, so each year, you're just going to be reporting each part of these. Um, so GEPR number one, some of our training or technical assistance events uh, provided by LEA schools. Next slide. Um, GEPR two, number of percentage of schools annually that report improves climate, uh, school climate based on the um, education uh, school climate survey or similar tool. Next slide. Number of percentage of schools annually that are implementing MTSS with fidelity, that's important. And then uh, next slide, please. Group four percentage of schools annually implementing opioid abuse prevention. Next slide and the percentage of schools that report an annual decrease in suspensions or expulsions related to alcohol. And finally, uh, number and percentage of schools that report an annual decrease in suspensions and expulsions for drug abuse. Um, and then next slide. So that's kind of it for my part. Again, um, I just wanted to give Jen a chance to, if you wanted to chime in on anything, Um, yeah, I've seen Rose's question in the chat. I think this is just a, an error in the slide. So the idea mm -hmm. here is if, is if the if if the two years are equal and there's no room for further improvement, you can mm -hmm. count that as improved. Yes. If the two years are not equal, then just compare the two years. And if they've improved, then it counts as improved. And if they haven't improved, um, then it doesn't count as improved. Does that help, Rose? I think that I think that helped. Um, someone asked a question about G6. G6 doesn't exist yet, so it's still G5. Okay. Um, so I'm going to talk about the remaining sections in this report. Uh, budget section B, which is everybody's favorite section. Again, the reporting period for this APR is October 1st, 2022 through May 15th, 2023. That has not changed. Whenever you have submitted your interim reports, um, the report covers the period a month before, that ends a month before the due date. So that's not a change. Um, 
We will provide when we send you um, the PowerPoint slides, we will send you a sample spreadsheet that will, could help you report on your expenditures. It's not required. It's just a guide that's helpful to some um, on reporting on their expenditures. Um, as in years past, we don't need to know how many paper clips you bought, but we do need to know what you have spent in the major categories that are listed in the 424, which is personnel, fringe, supplies, equipment, contractual, you, those type of um, line items is what you'll need to report on. And the form that we send you kind of helps you um, do that in a way that we can read and um, doesn't leave any doubt about what it is you're reporting on. Again, the spreadsheet that we're going to send you is a suggestion and doesn't replace what you're reporting in section B. Next slide. Um, so one of the questions people always have is around unexpended funds and what you were proposing to do with those or carryover funds. So if you expect to have unexpected unexpended funds by September 20th, 2023, you will use this section, section B, to discuss um, why you have those remaining funds and what you propose to use them on. And I say propose because your carryover has to be approved, right? Um, not only does your carryover have to be approved, but those activities or things that you are requesting to spend that carryover on also has to be approved. My suggestion to grantees is always, if in doubt, and maybe even if you're not in doubt, have a question with your, have a conversation with your project officer so you can discuss what it is you're proposing to use those carryover funds on. Because remember, um, one, they, they can't be new activities. And if they are new activities, those activities had to have been approved by your federal project officer. So either Spencer or myself. Um, and we'll be looking at making sure that what you're proposing to use those carryover funds on is reasonable, necessary, and allowable. It has to meet all three, okay? And so if you have funds, it's, uh, most people do have funds that they wish to carry over into the next budget period, you won't need to indicate what you're proposing to use those funds on. So we've mentioned this several times <laughs> before. And this time we really mean it. Like every year we really mean it. But um, the administration is looking to move away from grantees having very large carryover balances from one year to the next, especially without a clear plan on what they're going to use those funds on. Especially as you all are moving into your year, your la last years, year four, four and five, um, we don't want grantees to have these large available balances that they can't spend at the end and it just, the money goes back to treasury. So be very thoughtful and intentional about um, anticipating what your carryover funds are and making a very clear plan about what you're proposing to use those carryover funds on. If you have a clear plan, that's been approved, we can advocate for you much better than if you just say you have $250,000 over and you want to carry it over until the next budget period. So again, um, have a conversation with your federal project officer, discuss it um, so that you can be very clear um, and direct about what you're proposing to use these carryover funds on. Okay, next slide. And so again, um, as just as with the um, your GIPRA data or any data that you have um, outlined in Section A, by October 13th, you will need to provide your updated actual expenditures and carryover requests. Okay, um, there was a question from someone who said their school year ends. Um, so that they wanna be able to include their whole school year in the APR, which is fine. But that still leaves, what, three, four months left before the um, end of the award period, budget period, before September 30th. So you will need to update us on what you spent in those three months after the APR. 
and, and provide your actual final expenditures and carryover requests by October 13th. Um, I saw <clears throat> very briefly, someone asked about a no-cost extension. And if you don't mind, Spencer, I'll, I'll speak about that real quick. So a no-cost extension is approved for grantees to complete activities that have not been completed um, during their award period due to unforeseen circumstances. And so the premise being it's now April 12th, 2023. You don't necessarily know what your unforeseen circumstances are going to be in year five. So we, we tell grantees not to plan for a no-cost extension, even though a no-cost extension is an option that is available to you. But keep in mind, a no-cost extension is approved to complete activities due to unforeseen circumstances. It's not just to spend down money because you have money left. So you'll have to demonstrate that there are activities that you were not able to complete due to unforeseen circumstances. Now, we all know what some of these unforeseen circumstances are. And yes, COVID and COVID impacted activities would be an unforeseen circumstance. But um, natural disasters, very, very significant shifts in personnel and administration can be unforeseen circumstances. But you will have to demonstrate that there was something that impacted why your district was not able to complete those activities. Okay. And I'm sorry that I can't answer individual um, questions that are individual to your, your grant. You'll just need to reach out to your um, project director for that. I mean, your federal project officer for that. Next slide. Um, section C is where the department has asked for some um, additional information regarding your grant. And I hope that I updated this correctly because I know last time we um, did this, there was some um, duplication repetition in terms of the questions. So hopefully I've taken care of that. Um, <clears throat> and so section C, um, because quite often we get, we, OSSS, gets requests from administration around um, particular topic areas and issues that relate to grantees. So we kind of break those out here in section C so that we can very quickly identify um, the particular pieces of information that we need from grantees. So that's why we have these additional um, uh, pullouts that we request from grantees. So I, I'll try not to read it, but um, there are there's a, a piece about um, identifying activities that were not implemented due to COVID or un other unforeseen circumstances. Um, there's your um, budget data, or if you have very large carryover balances, you have very large available balances, you'll mention that here. Um, your uh, progress in for LEA personnel and uh, improving the school climate. Next slide. I think there are nine, nine pieces and there. They're similar to um, previous years. Um, progress, progress in improving quality and accessibility for data collection. Um, progress in encouraging uh, evidence-based practices. Um, your progress in coordinating your LEA efforts with various entities, state and federal in your area. Next slide. Um, your progress in helping to improve uh, student academic performance. It has some um, bullet points here that you can address. Next slide. Um, for, I think there's only two grantees that did not um, have opioid abuse prevention um, strategies. And if that, that's you, then you don't have to answer number eight. Um, and then number nine is very helpful to us at the department as well as the PBIS Center. Um, letting us know what technical assistance you may need from Ed or um, PBIS that you have not received or anything you wanted to share right there. Okay, next slide. And, oh, so someone said number eight, Janetta asked about number eight. Number eight was, can you go back a slide? Um, so number eight was your progress in implementing opioid abuse prevention and mitigation strategies. Um, of the 67, 69 grantees, there are only two who are not doing these activities. 
So that that was what I said. Um, so David, we'll send these slides out. Well, let me go back since we can you go back a couple of slides, Austin? One more, one more. <laughs> okay. Um, so number five, David had a question about your progress in encouraging the use of evidence-based practices um, and evaluating the fidelity of those efforts as it relates to school climate. Um, okay, so we can go to the end to the question slide. Okay, so, okay. Janetta, so, question about uploading uh, separately year by year into G5 for all four years? Um, what do you mean? Oh, I, I forget they can't talk. Okay. Um, <laughs> Jen, do you know what Janetta is talking about? Yeah, I I can't access G5, um, so I can't answer the question about G5. Um, I will say that what I tend to get is the PDF that you'll email to your project officer with all of the years. So like Spencer said, if you have a document where you're keeping all of your data in it and that's what gets emailed in, um, that's the report that I'll pull the, the GIPRA data from. I don't know if there's an auto upload into G5. Yeah, and apparently Shirley, who has done this before, says you have to enter them manually. Sorry. We don't we don't make up G5. We don't do G5. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, people are saying it's manual. Um, and then, so there are a couple of questions about if your school year ends the week after May 15th or very close to that, can you include that entire school year? Yes, you can, but if you don't have your final GIPRA data and you don't have your final budget information, you'll still need to provide that follow-up information to us by October 13th. And no, David said, can Jennifer be hired to, Jen be hired to decorate his office? I told her her office looks amazing. She's a great plant mom. <laughs> it's not approved. It's not approved. Um, okay. Let's see. Any other questions in here? Carolyn Moorhead asked if there's anything additional or different districts need to do if this current year is the last year, if they were awarded for only four years instead of five. So if they were awarded four years instead of five, um, you will need to reach out to your project officer. Um, Spencer and I don't make up when what is required of grantees, right? We go by what the administration is asking and um, you may need to provide some type of interim data because in your final year, your final performance report is due 90 days after the end of your award period. Um, but you may be asked to provide some interim data before that. So I if reach out to whoever of us is your project officer and have a conversation to see what it is you need to do. I can pipe in on Regina's question. Um, it's not just Nebraska, um, but Regina, I think it's helpful to remember that those questions don't need to be answered. Um, the default is prefer not to answer. Um, and um, And so you can leave it at that. You can remind students that they don't need to answer. Um, if they don't want to, um, they do, of course, have the option to answer. Um, there are, if you are struggling with that in your state, um, we're, we've seen it crop up, particularly before the, the midterm elections across a couple of other states. We're happy to share some of the um, ways that districts have navigated um, the answering of those questions. Um, if it's helpful, just reach out to me and I'll connect you with, with folks that are that are dealing with that. And it will also be um, helpful to the department if you are experiencing challenges um, like that in your school district, especially around collecting data or implementing your programs, that you include that in your executive summary or your narrative um, at some point in your report. Um, and Michael, there are the webinars are continuing. So if you're not getting notifications of those, let me know and we'll make sure you're on our list. But there is a series of webinars that we're running every month um, for school climate transformation grantees. 
you can find information on pbs.org. I think the next one might be this week um, or very soon, um, but reach out by email and let me know if you don't have that and we'll make sure you get on our list. And um, just a general for people who are not listed as a project director in G5 or your name is spelled incorrectly or you know, I didn't have my glasses on and I left a letter off your email and it's not working. Just make sure that you reach out to either Spencer or myself and we can correct who is in G5. And it's simply send an email to either one of us letting us know. Uh, TFI release date um, depends on how many schools we get to participate in our pilot this spring. Um, if you have... If you're interested in getting that out sooner, please think about participating. You can go to nepbis.org for information about how to do that. Um, best case scenario, there's a validated version out in the fall. It may be longer than that if we don't get an adequate sample size this spring. Okay. Um, and so again, if you have any questions after this, if you, you know, are burning the midnight oil, you think of a question, you can send either Spencer, Jen, or myself a, an email. I am going to correct that um, slide that had the numbers wrong uh, around reporting and get this slide presentation is out to you all as well as um, the sample budget expenditure sheet. But again, ask questions, let us know. And we're always by our laptop if you need anything. I'm not, but Spencer <laughs> well, is. The next, oh, webinar, Jen, <laughs> the next webinar, Jen's going to do some plant stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. Plant Care 101. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you guys have 27 minutes back to your day. Enjoy. Bye. Thanks for coming.